What we have here is a gib head key. This is the head. We call it a gib head because the key is tapered like a gib. And you drive the key in to fit. And that's how you lock. That's the retainer for this piece right here. You'll see this on a lot of old stuff instead of having set screws and things because screws were a big deal to make one time. So this goes in there, it's tapered. Some places they make these fairly flat. You'll see that a lot on uh, jaw crushers, even fairly new ones made in the 90s will use. But they're using one of these that's like four inches across and you pound it in with a 20 pound sledge after you warm everything up to 400 degrees. Getting them out is usually the real chore. Um, there's also ones that are, because this has the name of a gib head key, there also are gib head keys that are parallel. So there's parallel gib head keys, which it's no longer really a gib, but the gib head has its name and that continues on for it being a gib head key. Mm. When you see one, you don't always know. Sometimes they're just straight, there's other set screws, other things that hold it. Sometimes they drive these in and have set screws also. So it has double, double holding from different ways. Now, the way this is supposed to work is this goes in and then you put a block, a bar, whatever. This won't go in as far as it originally did. And part of that is I made this keyway shallow on purpose so that it would be having new life rather than having to build a new key also. Um, I don't know how far it'll go in. It should lock fine, however far it goes in. What they had before, it was driven way in beyond. They'd actually, part of this, the head was gone away. They may have even ground some off. I don't know for sure if they ground it off or if somebody else had ground it off, cutting in with a grinder, trying to get a hold of it to pull it back out. Because what you usually do is, Ideally, it would go in where you'd have like a three quarters or an inch left. Yeah. And I didn't do this that accurate to where I really know if it's going to be there. I just know I have more depth, so it won't go in all the way. It won't bind other than holding this tight. If it doesn't go in all the way, it still will hold it good enough. It's, it doesn't have to. And if it goes loose, they just come over here and tap it again. But um, anyway, they had this down to where there was basically no head left on it someone had ground it away and was trying to pry against it and the head was just gone so i welded it up so that they had some more head so there is a chance to get it off chances are next time because i don't think it will be a real close fit when it's driven in i think they're going to have to put a spacer in here and a pry bar to pull against what you do a lot of times with these they won't come out and usually you're in a position they put them to the other side so it's coming out um, but they had wanted this to be solid shaft for a bearing on this particular side. So when this one locks in, it's probably going to be a little bit high. But what happens a lot of times is these set for many years. Everything gets rusted. This will not come out. And you're not going to get this out without pulling this out. Like in this case where we had it, it was driven in all the way. Uh, no real way to get it out. We cut the shaft off and we pressed it out, which some of the videos show us pressing it out. And so then when we're pressing it out, we're pressing the shaft and the key, everything together, it's getting larger. It doesn't matter if the key doesn't move with it, we've still made progression on the shaft. If it binds to the shaft, it pushes it out. You, but just pulling by itself, what you can do, <clears throat> and I've done this many times, it would really have been Im nearly impossible from this backside. Um, but what I will do is I will weld a piece of rod onto it and use a slide hammer. Mm. And what you will find is usually you'll break part of it off and then there's part of it left in there. So then you'll go in there a little further, you'll drill a hole in it, you tap it and you'll thread into that and see if you can get some more pieces of it out. And if not, you just keep drilling through it as best you can to try and get rid of the gib key that uh, no longer functions. They do have gib keys also without heads, but hopefully you mm. never see one of those. Gib key without a head. 